Hello, this is GamerX20 and welcome to Gaming Memories. Today I'm reviewing a game which is from one of the best mangas during the late 90s to mid 2000s, Ghost in the Shell. Now I don't know about or unaware about this series, but I will tell you how it started. The series debuted back in 1989 and was created by Masamu Siro, if I'm pronouncing it right. It started out as a manga series, being the first one from April 1989 to November 1990. Then later in 1995, a film released called Ghost in the Shell, released in Japan and Europe in 1995. Then in America and the rest of the world in 1996. It was highly praised for keeping the source materials from the manga, had an atmospheric score, and the CGI effects is astonishing. It holds a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. Roger Ebert gave it a 3 out of 4 stars and quote, too complex and murky to reach a large audience. It's not until the second hour that the story begins to reveal its meaning. And was the first anime film to reach Billboard's number one video slot at the time of its release. This film influenced by a number of prominent filmmakers, most notable as The Matrix series, AI, Avatar, and Zero Gates. This lead to sequels, a live action film which is mixed merchandises and video games. The one that I'm going to talk about is the first one, Ghost in the Shell, exclusively for the PlayStation, released in July 17, 1997 in Japan, then October 31st, 1997 in North America, and finally July 1st, 1998 in Europe. Published by THQ in America, or Sony Computer Entertainment in Europe and Japan, and developed by Exact, who did the gameplay and graphics, and Production IG, who did the animated cutscenes. It is a third-person shooter, but unlike all the other third-person shooter games, this one tries to be a different take on it, but we'll talk about it later. When it was released, it was mostly positive back in 1997. It was highly praised. Most magazines' scores are good or mixed. And the main character was even featured on the front cover of the very first official US PlayStation Magazine Volume 1, Issue 1, October 1997, which includes a demo disc. And featured on page 108 about the creation of the movie and game and Q&As from the creator himself and merchandises as well. So, does this stand out as one of the best anime video game, just like its manga and movie counterparts? Let's find out. You play as a nameless male rookie, which you don't actually see the character you're playing as, who joins the members of Public Security Section 9, mainly consisting of Major Motoko Kusanagi, Chief Aramaki, Betu, Tugusa, Ishikawa, and Saito, meanwhile a group of terrorist organization known as Human Liberation Front claims responsibility for blowing up the Megatech Body Corporation building. It's up to you and the others to stop the organization and resolve the situation. 
The cutscenes looked good back in 1997 and noticeably different when compared to the 1995 film. The scenes are a combination of cell animation and background were rendered in 3D to ensure smooth transitions. It was all done with Adobe Photoshop. And for the voice cast, most of the English dubbed cast returned from the original film. Motoko, voiced by Mimi Woods, Bato, voiced by Richard Epgar, Aramaki, voiced by William Frederick, and Togasa, voiced by Christopher Joyce. However, new voice casts such as Bob Pappenbrook, Wendy Lee, Jimmy Krakor, and Julia Maddalena are not reliably known, while the Japanese version was done by a different voice cast. The graphics also resembles from the 1995 film, but the background is the only one that resembles it. The characters and enemy designs are good, except for the human enemy characters, which they're stilted, but that's what you expected for PS1 graphics. The level environments looks great by PS1 standards, like the warehouse district, the highway, the old abandoned city, the sea, and etc. At the beginning of the level, there is a briefing telling you what you need to do in each area, and plan your strategy. Like destroy four mech droids, go deep in the sewers, track down a cyborg, pursue a vehicle, or stopping an outbreak. And last is the hub. The bottom right is your GPS and your life bar. Your bar starts out blue, but if you get damaged, your bar gets lower and changes color, all the way to red. The bottom middle is your gauge bar, but more on that later. The upper right has many different features, like how many things to shoot, on a time limit, compass to track the target, and at the end of the level, the boss meter. And the bottom left is your high score, but nobody cares about it. Moving on. The soundtrack is fantastic. It has a techno and a little bit of rave as well to match the themes of the levels and possibly consider a top 10 best PlayStation 1 soundtrack right next to Symphony of the Night and the original Spyro the Dragon trilogy. Take a listen. Believe it or not, almost all of the music from the game were actually a soundtrack album titled Ghost in the Shell Megatech Body released the same day of the original Japanese release. So props to them for making the best soundtrack, especially producer Takio Ishino and the other composers including Mich Van Dijk. Like I said in the beginning. It's a third-person shooter, but unlike most other games that feature a human character, 
Instead, you control a spider mech suit that could climb through walls, have infinite bullets, and dashing by sliding either pressing the left and right L or R buttons, or move forwards and backwards by both pressing the L and R buttons, then both either up or down buttons. The controls can be a little stiff when you first start playing, but as you continue playing, you get the hang of it and master the controls. And can do techniques like the climbing attack, access turns, etc. And last but not least is the locked missiles. The square button fires regular bullets, however if you hold the square button it changes to bullets to locked aim missiles. If your gauge bar goes full at the right second, let go of the square button and blam! Every enemy that is in front of you gets toasted. But be careful. Hold it too soon, your locked aim missiles gets rejected. And another problem is don't get hit, otherwise your gauge bar goes back to nothing. And grenades by pressing the triangle button, can't forget about that. Finally, let's talk about the levels. Level 1. Destroy 4 droids that secure key codes to open the door to the warehouse building. This is a beginner's level and feels kinda like an open world. There's no time limit so you could practice the controls. After that, a boss. This one is easy. Climb all the way upside down, then aim missiles to the boss while avoiding his missiles. Level 2, go deep to the sewers. There are mines in most of the area, whenever you come across a dark path. It automatically turns on night vision in most parts of the area. Boss 2, avoid the waters while dodging attacks. Then after it stop, jump at the right time otherwise the laser will drain a quarter of your life bar. Level 3. Destroy all the barrels until time runs out. If you ran out of time, the entire factory explodes with you in it. Boss 3 is easy. Just keep sliding left or right in a circle while shooting and also dodging his attacks. And there we go. After that, then another cutscene of the next part of the mission. Level 4 is a chase level. All you gotta do is shoot the bad guys and dodging either sliding or jumping. Boss 4 is on a time limit, but to increase time, shoot one of the backup enemies to extend your time, so that way you could kill the boss with amount of time. Level 5, track down the optical equipped cyborg, which is the fifth boss by the way, and destroy it. But when you first encounter it, and taking half the damage, the cyborg cloaks itself and have to track it again around the old city many times. Until there's nowhere to run and finish the job. Level 6 is another chase level, and the exact same thing just like the 4th level. Jump, dodge, and shoot. Boss 6 is a huge truck. There are a total of 3 scenarios, with different sections and weak spots to shoot. After that, another cutscene about a nuclear power reactor located in Areopolis and can't be stopped. Until the spider mech AI, which I forgot to mention he talks and has a personality and has a role, sorry about that. Knows that one of the tanks are broken and could be destroyed easy. Why didn't you say so earlier? Yeah, same here. And so they go to Areopolis to stop it. And this is where the difficulty turns up a notch. Level 7. Destroy 4 turret droids. It's kinda like the first level, except you're destroying turrets, and actually hard trying to find them. Most of the time, Boss 7 ain't playing no goddamn games. He has so many attacks, from multiple missiles, to heat blast, to a gravitational weapon that drags you to him, so he could destroy you in a millisecond. 
side note, I actually beat this boss with the only amount of life bar left, trying to avoid any of his attacks in a pattern. And beat it like a pro. Level 8. You entered a underground passageway and have to get through a hallway-like maze using your compass while taking down enemies. Boss 8 is, hey, they stole our spider mech design, you bastards. Where was I? Oh yeah. Anyways, it's much more faster and has multiple bullets to fire and more agile than ours. Too bad this was a piece of cake. That's what you get for ripping off their own design. Level 9 is to go deep in the underground to shut down the energy power reactor, which just happens to be the ninth boss. This one is tough. It took me many tries until I figure out a strategy. All you need to do is shoot the tanks, but don't shoot the whole thing and go to the next. Instead, shoot a couple times on this one, then do the other one, then the next one, until shoot the exact same one again and there you go, you just made it much easier. After that, another cutscene. They may think it's all over, right? Wrong. The generator is going berserk and someone else is controlling it at the rooftop of the building. So it's up to you now to stop it for good and save the entire city. Level 10, go to the control room on the 97th floor while shooting enemies. And it's sorta of like a maze, so the compass is used as well. Boss 10, destroy two mechs. Watch out though, because they planted mines so it could damage you, so be careful. Level 11, you're climbing to the top while dodging mines and taking out droids. Boss 12 is very hard. You have to be closer to aim missiles at him. He has an attack that it's too hard to dodge some of his blasts and could shoot lightning towards you. So it's all trial and error to figure out his strategy and beat his pattern. Level 12, aka the final level, you're at the construction site of the building trying to jump through platforms and man this is hard. I mean if you accidentally go too early or too late you'll fall off and have to start the level over and over again. This is the section I keep dying and keep redoing this part. I have to make a precise jump so I can land perfectly. After that the final boss and the one who's controlling the reactor. His attacks are tough, but not that hard. It only took me a couple of tries and yes, that means all the way to the beginning again. After so many errors, I finally beat him. But wait, the boss then pushes you off the building, including himself. So this is your last chance to kill it in time, before you hit the ground. It only took me two tries. One, for frustration because I was down to low energy bar left, and the other one having half the bar and grenades to finally end this madness. And now we come to the ending. Unfortunately, my game kept freezing at the cutscene. But I don't want to spoil the ending because it's more of a twist ending. So if you want to know what it is, I suggest playing it for yourself. Either physical or emulate. Or watching it on YouTube if you're a lazy bum. <coughs> so, what do I think about this game? Well, it's great. The gameplay is good. The graphics, although blocky, still looks fine. The presentation is well balanced. The music is fantastic. And overall, the game is nearly perfect and could be a top 10 or 20 best PlayStation 1 game of 1997. But there's just one single thing that just stops this game for being a perfect 6 out of 6. 
these aren't bad, but they're just minor flaws. Number one, most of the levels are kinda too short and at least put a few more areas, especially level four. Two, there's not enough weapons, like maybe add in a rocket launcher, or laser beams, or invisible cloaks. Three, the items, which I also forgot to mention, only has health packs and grenades. That's it, nothing else. And four, the difficulty is kinda out of balance, for the most part. But I don't know, it's my first time playing the whole game, so leave a comment if I'm wrong. Aside from one flaw, it still is one of the best anime video game that came out for the system, just like its manga and movie counterparts. Even though I don't know about this series, I still enjoyed the game from start to finish. I recommend to PlayStation fans and Die Hard Ghost in the Shell fans to one buy on eBay or to emulate it. With that said, I give Ghost in the Shell for PlayStation 1 a 5 out of 6. This is GamerX20 and I'll see you next time.